You know, I've been wanting to get something in 308 for some time, and I was just never able to make it a priority. Then I got the Tavor 7 in 308, and I thought that might quench my thirst. I like that rifle quite a lot, but it left me wanting something a little more traditional. I don't mean traditional like my dad's hunting rifle, but maybe something that Mr. Stoner came up with many years ago would do. I thought maybe the AR-10 platform would be a very versatile way to get into 308 and still feel quite familiar. You say AR-10 and you have no shortage of options from a number of quality manufacturers. Prices can vary a bunch and I know enough to know that more expensive is not necessarily more gooder. So I asked around and I put some heavy faith in my good friend and the owner of my favorite gun store, Jim. He not only sees just about everything made at all price ranges, but he's a Marine and a former cop, and he knows his way around a rifle. He said that the one he bought for himself was the Springfield Armory St. Victor in 308. So, with a recommendation from a true operator, not just somebody following the marketing hype or the internet warriors, that was good enough for me, and I ordered it. Okay, first shots with the Springfield Armory, St. Victor. St. <laughs> Victor, the patron saint of Pink Mist in 308. And I am going to use the provided open sights at 50 yards and just see if I can put them somewhere near where I would like them to go. And I don't know how many rounds that was, but that's good enough for starters. It sounded like the last one. Okay, here's that target from 50 yards with the open sights, and these were my first shots. Um, and at first, I was aiming, you know, dead center on the bullseye, and I wasn't sure where my hits were. I can't see my hits that far away, so I wasn't sure where my hits were. And thinking I might be a little high, I dropped down to like a six o'clock hold on the green, and you can see my shots drop down accordingly. So she is putting them pretty much right there at 50 and that's just with the open sights and that's military surplus ammo so nothing special on the ammo either so with that um, I'm gonna try and sight in an optic see if I can get that on paper at 50 and then maybe stretch things out yeah I know you're probably saying shoot some good ammo why don't you don't worry I will and I did you might not see a whole lot of that in this video because I want to experiment and I want to find some good ammo and bullet weight that this gun really likes. So for break-in and general playtime purposes, I'm going mostly with the cheap steel cased and military surplus. Caliber of this St. Victor 308 is of course 308. It will also shoot 7.62x51 NATO. Barrel is a 16 inch has a 1 in 10 twist. It is melanite coated inside and out. Pretty much everything on this rifle inside and out is melanite coated. Has a nice set of sights that come standard with it. They are flip up design. They are polymer for the most part with some steel components in them. The trigger is a very nice nickel boron coated single stage flat trigger and it's probably my single favorite element so far on this gun. 
both the upper and lower receiver are a T6 aluminum forged type and they are hard coat anodized. Gas system is direct impingement. It does sport a pinned gas block and seriously is there anybody who's not doing that now? The total weight of this rifle is a very respectable 7 pounds and 11 ounces so well under 8 pounds for a pretty sizable rifle. It comes with one magazine that's a 20 rounder. It's a Magpul Gen 3. The muzzle brake out front is a proprietary design. Seems very effective. Handguard is 15 inches long. There is plenty of handguard there. It's also hard coat anodized aluminum. Overall length of the rifle is just a hair under 38 inches. 34 and a half inches with the stock fully collapsed. And the MSRP is $13.99. All right, I got 15 more rounds of Tula in my magazine, and I've got some steel hanging down range. I'm going to see if I can ring some. I'm not sure if I can get the little one or not. Well, I'm not even sure if I can get the big one, <laughs> but the little one is real hard to see. There's not much paint left on it either, but let's try it. Yeah, baby. <laughs> All right, looks like we took the little one out of service. Bang a gong, get it on. Oh, what did I do? Miss with my last shot? We got some steel hanging at 100 yards, too. And I feel like a challenge. So I'm going to try it. Just about four rounds. And I'm just going to see if I can hit that big plate, which looks like it's probably a 12 inch plate at least a 10 and that is a hundred yards yeah baby It looks like it's putting them all in a nice little group there, too. There we go. All right, let's end the day on that fine note brought to us by a plate of steel. Hey, remember that Tula that would not shoot in the Tavor 7? This is that exact box of ammo. In fact, these have already failed. I'm going to try them in this St. Victor. See if they will shoot. I've loaded five. Let's see what happens. Yeah, baby. Okay, I am so ecstatic that the Tula ammo runs in this rifle with no issues at all. And on my last uh, sight-in attempt, it actually looks like it made a nice group. So I'm going to make a group at 50 yards. 
with the Tula. Just to sort of show us all that uh, you should not have to break the bank to get good performance. And that goes for both the rifle and the ammo. Hemi-optic, I guess. This is the Sig Sauer Bravo 5, by the way, this scope. Alright, see how that was. Alright, let's see what we got down here. And hey, not too bad. You know, with my terrible old eyes, I will take that. That was a, uh, again, that's with the SIG Bravo 5. That's a 5X fixed power scope. Tula steel cased ammo. Okay, so doing the first cleaning, the first post shooting cleaning, and just admiring the quality of the bolt carrier and bolt. I'm not certain. I think this is a melanite finish, but this the finish on this bolt carrier is just fantastic. Very nice. It's it's got a nice lubricity to it. It's got a beautiful shine, and it just appears like it's going to be incredibly tough and durable and long lasting. And I like that. It is a very nice, <laughs> especially for a mostly internal part, because this is all we're going to see right here. And uh, it is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the bolt itself, equally beautiful. Uh, the only thing you can see there, the, uh, the duller extractor, because that is just a different material and doesn't have that finish on it. But it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Makes it easy to clean, too. So even the pins are well finished. Very nice. Firing pin is very light. I'm not sure. I may have to do some research <laughs> so I can be accurate, but I believe that's a titanium firing pin because it weighs nothing. It weighs absolutely nothing. But it gets the job done. It definitely gets the job done. It shot all that Tula ammo without any problem at all. So there we go. A little quick look at the internals. They are just absolutely gorgeous. Well done, Springfield Armory. So I did actually shoot some sort of formal groups at 100 yards with different ammo. I shot about four different types. And what you see here is the best of those four. None of them were great and none of them were bad. Um, and I was only using a bipod on the rifle. I wasn't, didn't have it rested in a, uh, a really good rest, which I will do in the future. And I'm still trying to figure out what kind of ammo it likes. So what I'm seeing here from the results of this day is that I think with that 1 in 10 twist, it's going to like the heavier bullets. So this group uh, was actually the best. And if you discount this flyer, which clearly <laughs> is separate from the other four, I shot five shot groups. Um, counting that flyer, it was 3.182 inches, just over three inches. But if you take away that flyer, it's 0 0.929 so the best and that's for the best three uh, so I always do that I'll shoot five and then I'll I'll measure five and measure the best three that helps to remove my inconsistencies and uh, deficiencies from the equation so the best three was under an inch uh, and that's more what I would expect this rifle to do time after time once I get dialed in with the right ammo and and all that so I'll show you the results um, of all four of those groups, but this one was the best and this one leads me to believe that maybe going with heavier bullets and obviously the high grade ammo is going to be the way to go. So if you watch my channel, you know that when it comes to rifles, I'm a pretty good handgun guy. <laughs> so when I'm stumped, I do what anyone would do. I sit down and watch the Military Arms channel for a while and try to do what Tim does. I might not have any skill, but at least that teaches me where to 
point to when I say certain words and maybe not look quite so stupid. I spent several range trips putting a few hundred rounds through this rifle so far and as mentioned I shot a variety from steel case and mill syrup to the two dollar per shot stuff. I never had the slightest hint of any kind of malfunction but I'll confess that I didn't run the gun hard or make any attempts to induce any problems I just shot it like it's meant to be shot. I like just about everything about this rifle starting with the provided flip up sights which are traditional A2 style give a nice crisp picture. The rear sight has graduation marks for adjustments which is good though mine didn't seem to need moving at all. The handguard is about as long as one of Cassandra Peterson's legs and just as pleasant to grasp. It has generous M-lock over the full length and I like that they didn't run Picatinny rail all the way down it. There's a generous rail atop the upper receiver for mounting your scope. The furniture is from Bravo Company, the first time I've used their products and I mostly like it. The pistol grip is very nice with great texturing and the stock adjusts to six positions. The controls are of course AR controls, there's nothing really noteworthy to say about that. I did find the charging handle to be a little bit stiff and maybe stubborn at times, but that might be partially me and it might need to wear in a little bit over time. Out front is a nice muzzle brake that seems to do a good job keeping the gun flat and again that is a proprietary design. But the feature I found myself really loving is the trigger. It's that nickel boron coated, single stage, perfectly flat trigger. My initial pull test with my Lyman gauge measured about four and three quarter pounds or so. I'll check it again after I've used it more. The trigger feels great and it pulls great. It's got a nice reset. I definitely can't blame any of my missed shots on the trigger, unfortunately. I still have a lot to learn with this rifle, but I think I did well to listen to Jim's advice because I don't think the Saint would have probably been on my short list otherwise, and that would have been a shame. At this price point, I don't think you're going to find a better semi-automatic 308 with the features and the level of quality built into this package. This is a great platform not just for pro users like Jim, but for rifle tards like me. You'll see it again soon because I do plan to keep getting back out and do a lot of testing with ammo and learn to shoot tight groups. So what more do you want to know about this rifle for the next installment? Let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it.